Nissan say that the brand new Navara raises the bar for style and performance in the pickup truck sector. It's also quite clear that their 80 years of experience has been poured into this vehicle right here. It's one of the very few that comes with a five year warranty or 100,000 miles depending on which one comes first. So with all of that percolating inside your head, let's see how the brand new Nissan Navara at the Tecna trim level handles the Banner Arbor Road Test. Okay, so before we get going, I sincerely hope you enjoy this review. And if you do, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to click the bell to get notified whenever we post new content just like this. And if you are in the market for a brand new van or a pickup truck, head to vanarama.com and check out the deals. Right, with all that out of the way, let's take a look at the front end of this, well, very shiny vehicle. There is so much chrome at the front. I'm pretty sure if you were running late for a meeting and you desperately needed to check how you looked, you could just lean on in and check your reflection. Ah, reflection perfection. There is a lot of chrome at the front here and the Tecna trim level you even get chrome around your fog lights around here and you also get some nice little additional bits of trim like these black inlays around the headlights. You can see there's lots of nice reflective surfaces in there. Looks really good. I think it really sets off the front end very nicely. You've got these huge alloy wheels and I've got to say they're some of the most attractive wheels I've seen on a pickup truck yet. There's more chrome on the wing mirror right here. And look, the sequential indicator is inlaid just there. Underneath, you've got a camera which forms part of the uh, network of cameras that make up a 360 view, which I'll show you later when we're inside. Take a look at the doorstep. Usually this is just all black, but at the Tecna trim level, you get that silver accentation down the side, really, really nice. And they've mirrored it on the roof bars as well. Usually they would be black, but at the Tecna trim level, you get these nice silver ones. So, lots of silver, lots of kind of brushed, lots of shiny, well, it's a very nice exterior, but let's get inside and take a look at this interior that I've been hearing so much about. Oh. Okay, so the first thing I noticed when I got inside this vehicle was that all the chrome and brushed aluminium from the outside has been brought onto the inside too. I mean, look, you've got some chrome around the gear stick, you've got brushed aluminium on the frame round here, it's around the cup holders, it's around the instrumentation in the dash, it's on the steering wheel, it's either side of the infotainment screen. I mean, it doesn't look cheesy. I think that's what I'm trying to get across. It just doesn't look cheesy, it looks really good. And one of my favorite things that struck me, first of all, was that this assembly of the vents up here looks almost exactly like the front of the vehicle, kind of swept round. Just me? No, I don't know, I really like it. Okay, so, driver comfort. Now, the driver's seat is fully leather lined, that's what you get at the Tecna trim level, you get all this leather in here, and it's eight ways adjustable by some electric controls just down here. Now, you don't get electric controls on the passenger seat, but you do get all the nice leather lining. And what I particularly like about this leather lining right here is that it's panelled out. In fact, you get a panel for each bum cheek. You've got one for lefty, and you've got one for righty, and you just, I don't know, I guess you just stick your junk right there. Okay, so the steering wheel. The steering wheel is lovely and leather lined, again that's Tecna trim level, but it's also spring loaded and fully adjustable. Now usually when you want to adjust the steering wheel, you just release the catch, and you know you just move it around and it kind of feels a bit light and floaty well in the nissan navara it's spring loaded it will always return to the top see i pull it right down if i want to hold it in place right there just put the catch back on but as soon as i release it it returns right back up to its highest setting really good really nice touch okay so on the steering wheel you do have some controls on the left hand side you've got all your audio controls and on the right hand side you've got your speed limiter and your cruise control they're very good buttons very nice and tough and the rockers on each side are also very responsive behind that you've got your instrument cluster so you've got your speedometer on the right hand side you've got your revs on the left and in the middle you have an excellent driver display unit it has all sorts of information on there and a really nice visualization of the status of the vehicle right in the middle of it which is great to the left of that you've got your start stop button which turns everything on and there are some tones right there I think what it's trying to say is uh, press the button again and then all the instruments come on the Nissan logo hits the information screen that's really nice okay so let's move across the dashboard which is nice and tough and black plastic you've got that lovely vent assembly that I spoke about just there above that you do have a little bit of storage you've also got your first of your three 12 volt sockets 
That's right, you've got three 12 volt sockets in here. We'll cover those as we move down. The big infotainment screen is, I think, one of the best I've seen in a pickup truck. It's not particularly complicated to use. Everything is very clear. And Nissan's own system, like the ones you'll find in some of the PSA Group's uh, machines, is very clear and very functional. If you want to go to the main menu, you just press the menu button. If you want to go to their own satellite navigation system, which you get at the Techno trim level, there you go. And it's really nice and really clear but you can also manually change the color of it to daylight or nighttime settings just by pressing the button below it there you go there's your nighttime settings and there's your daytime settings all your audio controls are in the button well when you press the button that says audio on it believe it or not mind blown uh, on the right hand side you've got some very interesting buttons now I like it when a vehicle allows you to turn on external cameras. Uh, so for, say for instance that you reverse this particular vehicle into a uh, tight parking space and you're a bit worried about all the sides, but you don't really want to have to get out and have a look around, press the camera button and there you go. Immediately on this left hand side of the screen you get a 360 visualization of everything around the vehicle from the front, the back and the two sides. And those were those cameras that I was pointing out hanging on the door mirrors showing you right there. You've also got the rear view camera which shows you everything that's behind you but if you press it again the screen on the left hand side changes to the camera hanging on your offside mirror so the one that you can't see if you're pulling into a car parking space at the side of the road and there's a particularly high pavement just press the camera button twice and you'll see absolutely crystal clear whether you're about to curb those lovely alloys very nice feature, it's great to see that. You've got your skip buttons there as well. You've also got some back buttons and various other controls either side. Below that, you've got climate controls and everything mirrored right here, it's all on the screen. So if you wanted to use the screen to adjust all of your climate settings, you can. But all of these buttons down here do exactly the same job. You've got your air conditioning, again, techno trim level stuff there. Below that, this is where it starts getting interesting. So you can choose your drive setting, with this little knob down here. So you've got your two wheel drive, you've got your four wheel drive and your full lock as well. Now you can switch the first two quite easily, but if you want to go to full lock, you've got to push it in, but it's very nice, very responsive, and you're in absolutely no doubt what setting you've got the vehicle in. There's a blank button, and next to that, you've got your hill assist button. Right next to that, you've got your window lock, and here's number two, the second 12 volt socket. Below that, you've got a USB socket, which you can use to hook your phone up because this infotainment screen actually has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is great. It's nice to have those functions as well. And below that USB socket, you've actually got an aux in and you've got a nice tray, which is a very good place to put your phone if you've hooked it up there. So let's move down to the gear stick. As I said, there's all that chrome trim. And because this is an automatic vehicle, you're not going to be touching it too much. Behind that, you've got your heated seat buttons. You've got another blank button. And then you've got two very good cup holders now. I am a snob about cup holders, I know everyone knows that, and I know I always go on about it, but I just think they're really important. If you're driving around a lot, you like to have a bottle of water or a Starbucks or something, it's good to know that you've got a reliable cup holder to jam them in. And even though there are no kind of little spring-loaded holders that clamp anything in place, they are very good, and they're very nice, and they're framed by this lovely brushed aluminium as well. To the right of that, you've got the handbrake, and well, it's leather lined, just like everything else in the Techno trim level, and right at the end, you've got a lovely chrome button. Very good, and a very sturdy handbrake. Just behind that, you've got a nice cubby with a little flip top roof, very low, look at that. Just release the catch, boing, up it goes, and there is your third 12 volt socket at the bottom right there. Very nice is this little notch here, which means that if you have plugged your phone in, or you've got a little USB adapter down there, you can trail the wire out through there, and you can shut the lid. So you can still use that as an armrest, even if it's got something in there. And there we go. What a great interior. It's also got some nice little features that I just want to point out before I hop into the back to show you how big it is in there. Nissan Navaras have always been very good about their sunglasses holder, and this latest generation is absolutely no different. There you go, whack your sunglasses in there. Those are not going anywhere. Finally, Let's have a look at some storage. There's a nice little cubby up here with a texturized bottom. As I said, there's that 12 volt socket at the back there. You've also got some door storage. You've got room for bottles in the door and, and whatever else. There's like a big kind of shelf down at the bottom, uh, which you could probably stick, well, maybe a pack of tissues or something down there. Not too much. The glove box is right here. And right as you'd expect, there's your manual. You've got your locking wheel nuts and you've also got an add blue filler in there as well. So there we go. All in all, a very nice, a very well appointed and very comfortable interior. So it's good for the people up the front. Let's hop into the back and see if it's good for the people in the back. 
and it turns out you get all the leather in the front, in the back as well. And it's nice to see that the panelling from the front seats is here. So lefty bum cheek and righty bum cheek will be very nice and comfortable. So I'm going to get in because I want to show you just how much room there is in the back of the new Nissan Navara. Now look, I'm 5'11", I've got plenty of headroom, I've got plenty of legroom. Got a little bit of storage here, some storage in the doors. Got a headrest that's very nice and comfortable. I feel like I could catch some Zs. And I think it's just great to see. I mean, the only thing that I could really knock the back end uh, with is by saying, well, there's no reading lights um, and there's no armrest. The armrest is a bit unforgivable, but the reading lights I can forgive because we, we don't read books in the cars anymore. We just use our phones and they're illuminated. So there you go, very nice interior. I've got to give a lot of credit to Nissan for taking all that experience with the Qashqai, the X-Trail, and making good SUV interiors whacking it straight here in the brand new Nissan Navara. So that's the interior. Let's head out to the back and check out the load space. Okay, now before I drop the tailgate on the Nissan Navara, I just want to point out three things. Number one, the reversing camera. Number two, the tow bar, which allows you to pull 3,500 kilograms. It's a hefty weight. And that's an extra that you can have added by our workshop. If you want it done, just ask us when you first inquire about the vehicle. And over here, just so you know, I wasn't telling any porky pies, five year warranty or 100,000 miles, whichever one comes first. So drop the tailgate and give you an opportunity to have a look at the back end of this vehicle in all its glory. So at its widest it is 1.5 meters, at its longest it is almost 1.6 meters. It's half a meter deep and just between the wheel arches the width thins to 1.1 meters and the payload is 1,100 kilograms. I mean that is really really good. I mean it's not necessarily class leading but it certainly sets the Navara apart from the competition. And speaking of the competition let's take a look at some of the vehicles available in the pickup truck sector right now. First up, the Ford Ranger. Now, the latest version of this tough pickup is incredibly popular, but as you'll see, it too has a lot of competition to deal with, but it's winning. And if you're watching this review, the chances are you've already watched our one all about the Ford Ranger. The Fiat Fullback, a great value pickup truck that platform shares with the Mitsubishi L200, so it comes from good stock, well worth a look. And what about the Isuzu D-Max? Well, there's something understated about the D-Max, and that's fine. It does the job of a pickup without making a fuss. Farmers love it, and that is high praise indeed. The Mercedes-Benz X-Class. It shares some bits of the Nissan Navara, meaning that Mercedes-Benz is able to build a luxury pickup on the bedrock of a top-performing platform, but sadly, this truck is not hanging around much longer at all. The Toyota Hilux. Now we're several generations in and the Hilux continues to perform incredibly well. It's got the usual high Toyota build standards and the tech bundled in there is very user friendly too. The Mitsubishi L200. Now this is the sixth version of the powerful truck and it's just hit the market. I love its new looks and refined engines. The Barbarian trim level is better than ever with a powerful engine under the hood and leather luxury behind the doors. And finally, the VW Amarok. Now the VW brand is incredible incredibly strong and is clearly on show in the Amarok pickup truck. It's big and comfy at speed, so much so you'd easily mistake it for an SUV's drive quality. And there you go. Now there's loads of competition being faced by the new Nissan Navara, but thousands of users across the globe will tell you that this is the best pickup truck. Put it on your list when you head to vanarama.com to look for some deals. So there you go, there's the competition, but honestly, who on earth gives a flying whatever about the competition when we've got a brand new Nissan Navara right here. You know what? I think after taking a look at the inside and the loading bay, the only thing left to do, get on the road, give this a good old drive. What a lovely sunny day it is to be out driving a Nissan Navara, a brand new, no less, 69 plate Nissan Navara. Ah, this is what dreams are made of. The only thing that would make it better is if I was actually in the Navarre region of Spain driving a Nissan Navara, then that's like the full house. Now I've got a family, I've got a son, I've got a wife. My wife works in production which means she needs to carry a lot, which means we need a vehicle that's you know, not only functional in terms of families, child seats, that kind of stuff, but also something that can be used on the weekends when she works or on the evenings when she works to carry larger loads than you'd expect. You know, I'm talking like ply boards and tools and things like that that she'd need to put together her production. A pickup truck is the perfect answer to that. I mean, look, people say to me all the time, but you love vans. You know, why don't you get a combi or something like that? You know, like a, you know, like a double cab van. 
And actually I go, well, because with a pickup truck, you get a roller top shutter on the back, you've got something that looks like a car, it's as safe as a car, drives like a car. It's one of the many reasons why the Nissan Navara continues to be such a head turner. Operators love it. It's safe, it's robust, it's tough, it's durable. It can carry an excellent amount in the back and it can tow a lot too. There is so much down weight on the tarmac that it is an incredibly safe vehicle to drive. Now safety is something that Nissan have always been very good with. I spoke earlier about the seamless transition between its car offering and its commercial vehicle offering. Now all the safety you'd expect in a personal vehicle is right here in a commercial vehicle too. Before I'd ever really gotten to know pickup trucks better, I was never really that interested in them. It was actually the Nissan Navara that made me sort of fall in love with pickup trucks as a choice for a vehicle. Ever since I joined this industry, I've always liked the Nissan Navara. Now I'm not entirely sure what it is about the Navara that I've always enjoyed, but I think it was the profile. It had a very cool cut between the loading bay and the cabin that always seemed to stand out more on the side of the Nissan Navara than any other pickup trucks that I'd seen. It was also the one pickup truck that I would consistently get into and feel like I was sitting in a luxury SUV. Now, admittedly, that was before I'd sat in a Ford Range Wildtrak, previously I'd sat in Ford Range Limiteds. And it's not that there's a major difference in those trim levels, but I got into the front of a Nissan and I felt like I was sitting in a Qashqai. That kind of seamless link between a manufacturer's car offering and their commercial vehicle offering is often jarring, but with Nissan, it's not. You don't feel any transition between the two. You just feel like you're hopping into another Nissan. That is one of the key reasons why I think the Navara continues to perform incredibly well in the market and why it continues to turn so many heads. I guess that's the point. When you look at the pickup truck market these days, there's a lot to choose from. Why choose a Nissan Navara over an L200? Why choose an L200 over a Ford Ranger? Why choose a Ford Ranger over the Nissan Navara? Around and round and round. Why not go for something like a Sanyong Musso? Why not go for a T60? Why not wait until the Rivian RT1B comes out? I mean, look, if they all did exactly the same thing, then there'd be no choice between them. But actually there is. It's the interiors, it's the comfort, it's the feel of the engine. Is it easy to drive? Are the pedals responsive? Those are the things that should sit in your mind as the key factors that dictate your choice. If you're looking for something that's fun to drive, feels like a car and is more like an SUV than a pickup truck, the Nissan Navara is a real key choice. If you're looking for something that drives like a car but returns the running costs of an excellent commercial vehicle, the Nissan Navara is a key choice. So how do we finish this one? Well, the brand new Nissan Navara is not a revolution in the pickup truck marketplace, but what it does show is that Nissan absolutely understand what it means to combine a high quality interior, an excellent exterior, and a fantastic engine under the bonnet into one full package. The fact is that when I was reviewing this vehicle, the only thing that I could quibble about was the fact that there wasn't an armrest in the back or reading lights. And if those are the only things that I'm quibbling about at the end of a Vanarama road test, that pretty much tells you everything you need to know about the brand new Nissan Navara.